Welcome everybody to the GSD podcast. In this podcast, we help business owners, entrepreneurs, and contractors who feel stuck, confused, and uncertain what to do in their business. And through this podcast and my experiences, I plan to bring you clarity, value, and purpose so that you can have a thriving business. Welcome to our third episode. Today's episode is called, What is Your Niche? Or Niche, depending on how you pronounce it. Either way, it's the same thing. So today we're going to talk about what is your niche? And we're going to get into the specifics of why that is so important and why it actually took me a while to learn that because I didn't focus on that in the beginning. So to jump in with this, there's a saying that I heard in uh, one of the mastermind groups I'm in, and it's called broad equals broke. So what do you think that means to you? Well, broad, meaning you do a bunch of things, it's going to equal broke, especially if you're a contractor or entrepreneur trying to start. And even a business, don't get me wrong, hear me out really quick. Back in the day, I was always taught, know a lot of different things, know how to do a bunch of different things because that is going to help you succeed. So I, my whole life, have always been a jack of all trades. That's what I knew. That's what I was used to. I love doing a lot of different things. But as I've gotten older and I've learned more and seen what successful people are doing and successful businesses, and even just the way I would say today's day and ages with businesses and people, people want a master of one rather than a master of none. So instead of a jack of all trades, someone who can do a little bit of everything, somebody wants a master that knows it. What does that mean? I'm going to give you a few examples and give you some backstory from me, but understand, figure out what your niche is. You know, if you think about it, think of like doctors. So there's doctors that specialize in different things. Doctors who do specialize in one thing make more, way more money than a general like practitioner does that maybe just treats your family. But also at the same time, think about that. Your doctor that you go to when you're sick, would you have them do brain surgery for you? Probably not, because it's probably not their expertise. Such as if someone has a specialty on doing something with your knee, you're probably not going to have them operate on your heart. So specialties and mastery is very important. So the whole broad equals broke is more of a term of saying, the more you do, the more broad your business becomes and the more you are like, oh, I'm going to do this, this, and this, it's going to make me a ton of money is actually the opposite. It's going to make you less money because now you have to focus so much time on understanding each one of the things you want to do and be really good at it and then try to succeed from it. So let me give you a little backstory from me and then I'm going to give you another example that's really good. So I, at this point, about 11 years ago, started my business. I'm just coming up on the 11 year mark of when I started my business. I actually started as an audio person. I've played music my whole life. I've been a musician. I love recording and mixing. I also went to school for that. I went to school for radio and TV and broadcast besides business. So this is something that's just in my blood. Well, I was debating on going into business for myself and I came across an old coworker that I used to freelance and do recording for. She said that they were starting up a new performing arts studio that's going to involve commercials, photo shoots, modeling, performance, and they needed someone to run their studio again. And I said, perfect, I, I'm on board, let's do this. I said, it's the perfect segue to start up my own business. They're like, well, you know, we also, we need someone that can help us with multiple things because we need to redo a website. We shoot video, but we need some help with video editing. And I was like, well, actually, I'm pretty good at a little bit of all that. And I'm a designer because I went to school in the very beginning. When I first left high school and went to college, I actually went for fine arts. So they're like, awesome. So I said, perfect. This is a great way to start my new business. And I was like, I can do all this. So what happened? I became a jack of all trades. So at first, it wasn't too bad because it was one client, one studio working me like 40 hours a week. So it really wasn't my own business, was it? It wasn't. It was actually like having another job, but things I loved. I kept working and working and working at that. And I'll, I'll save the story for another day, but that business ended up closing three months after I started working with them. They shut down and then the owner pushed on and then reopened something new. But I thought, hey, here's my new career. I'm three months out and we're about to close down. What the hell? So eventually we went someplace else. But what happened is I realized I need to get other clients in. So I started to offer not just audio, but video services shooting video, editing, and then I was like, hmm, I can build websites. So I'm offering website services. I do graphic design, so I can help with print material, design material, t-shirt design, all those different things. 
And then I was like, oh, I'm going to learn marketing. I can help you with social media. I can help you with running ads. Well, guess what, guys? It sounds great, but I'll tell you what, it didn't make me more money. It helped me in the beginning for more money only because I was introduced to different clients that all needed something different that I felt like I could do. But when I looked at all my clients, each one I was doing something different for. But I wasn't doing one thing consistent for a multitude of clients. I was doing one thing for every client. So if I lost this one client, my web stuff was gone. If I lost another client over here, my video editing was gone. So I was doing all these different things. So at first I'm like, cool. Well, just like I talked about in a previous episode, only an entrepreneur is crazy enough to leave a 40 hour a week job to work 70 hours a week. Well, guess what? That became me. I was working nights and working weekends because I had to keep up with all the latest trends and all the latest ideas and things that were going on in each one of these different categories just to be relevant to get work. It was exhausting, but I did it. And I did that for four or five years. And I actually stopped because I realized, wow, I'm losing life with my daughter. I'm losing life with my wife. I'm spending most of my time working and I'm very stressed out and just not having fun. And I slowly started to peel back things, but it was tough because I was making money off of all these things. But like I said, if I lost one client, I lost one service. And then I started working with another client and I started learning Google ads. I just threw something else on my plate. So eventually I would say about six to seven years in the business, I started to pull back. And now at this point, 11 years in, I pulled back about three years ago and I said, I'm doing two things. I'm doing video and audio, which I kind of, they're not hand in hand, but I do audio work through video now. I don't do as much recording and mixing with audio, but audio and video are together because I like to put sound effects and sound design in videos and, and edit and produce larger video projects. So to me, audio and video are in one, and then I do Google ads only. So I only do Google ads and videos, and I help create videos for clients and edit them to then run ads on Google. I don't do Facebook or social media anymore. I don't do design work anymore. I really don't do websites anymore. If somebody came to me to do a recording project, I probably would because I love it, but I don't focus on it. My main business is video and Google ads. That's it. I condense everything to those two. And now it's still difficult, guys. I'm not going to lie. It's it's not broad, but it's still kind of open there. You know what I mean? But, I, but just condensing to those two, I know it's going to sound crazy, but just condensing to those two, I doubled my revenue in my business in one year by just going to those two because I started to spend my free time only learning all the new stuff related to video and AdWords. And it was possible for me to gain more expertise, which people were coming to me for the results that I was giving them. Now, don't get me wrong. Doing all those different things made me well-rounded and it helped me with the aspects of how to make a better video and how to, and with websites also how to make a better ad and help people with what they should have on their website so the ad can convert better. So there was benefits to it, but I didn't actually start making better money until I condensed and I still plan on condensing more. So when you're broad, you just, you're taking on so much work and you're either going to burn yourself out or you're going to become broke because you can't keep up with all the trends because someone is going to be a master at that who is going to be the same price as you, maybe more, maybe even less. That's going to take that work. So you want to focus on knowing what your niche is. So how do you figure that out? I don't know. Think about your business. What is your business? You know, again, from our last episode, start from the basics. Like, what do you want to do? What do you have knowledge of, skills in, and a mastery of? And then start to narrow that down, really start to pick it down. For example, I'm going to use Google Ads. So I do Google Ads. But the way I can narrow that more is I don't want to do Google Ads for every business in the world. Maybe I do, do Google Ads for, let's say, solar companies only or law firms only. And I get really good at specializing Google Ads for a specific industry. Same thing with video content. So even though I narrowed my businesses or my, sorry, my offers, I still can go more. And the more I start to narrow down, guess what? I actually make more because I have people looking for people who only focus in what their product or service is. Let me give you another example. This is a great example. There's actually a client I work with and they do a ton of different services. There's one service they could specialize in, but they do a ton of them. So here's an example. 
So let's say there's a housing company out there. Let's say the housing company's name is, you know, uh, I know it's super generic, but let's just say it's single family housing. So single family housing builds single family homes, builds townhomes, builds apartment, uh, apartment complexes, builds hotels and other housing structures. Well, when you try to market that, let's say you're marketing for that company, there's so much that they do. It's hard to get somebody to hire them to build things out because they do. Yes, it's all housing, but they are trying to focus on all these different things. Now, understanding, you know, I've lived everywhere. I've lived in apartments. I've lived in a home. I've lived in a town. I've lived in all these different places and I've been in plenty of hotels. When you are going to look and buy a home, like me as a home buyer, I want to see that the developer who's building specializes in homes only because I know I'm going to get the best of home building. If I were to move into a townhome, I want someone who specializes in townhome and understands community living and shared walls and does what is needed to help that. So when I feel like I'm in my townhome, I feel like I'm in my own home and it's quiet. You know, we've all lived in apartments. All of us have lived in apartments. And I don't think any of us have lived in an apartment that's completely silent that you don't hear anyone. That's impossible. It, it just doesn't happen. So I would love, if I was to move an apartment, I'd love to know a builder built apartment specializing in apartment living who might have the budget to put in more soundproofing. When you do all these, I would rather pick builders that were specific to single family homes, you know, townhomes, apartments, hotels, duplexes, you name it. I'd rather have that one, you know, company that masters that and build my place than somebody who's like, ooh, we can do all of them. Yeah, there's similarities, of course. There's similarities in all that. But if you want to be the best in one, you're only going to focus your time in that. So if you're a company that's like, oh, I'm going to do all these buildings, there's different codes, different standards. So now you have to hire somebody that knows or is going to learn those specific things. So let's say you start off single family homes, you're expanding to townhomes. You probably need to hire more staff to help build the extra homes. You need to probably hire a couple people to manage and just understanding the code and the building aspects of townhomes. So as you grow or become broader and say like, I can do it all, you spend more money because now you're hiring people for each part. And then if you know you have a person that's really good at understanding apartments and they leave, now you're bringing someone in, spending time training and getting them up to par. You know, it's not it's not the same. And, you know, I'll go back to the doctor example. If I have a doctor who's like, yeah, I'm a general practitioner, but I'm a brain surgeon. I'm a heart surgeon. I can fix issues with your knees. I can fix shoulder issues, stuff like that. You know what? I don't want the bargain doctor. I want the doctor. If I have heart issues, I want the heart surgeon. That's an expert. If I'm getting brain surgery, I want the expert. That's a brain surgeon. I don't want the doctors like I can do them all because I guarantee you they did not spend the time to be a master at all of them. So back to the example of the housing, yes, there's similarities through all of it, but I'd rather have the company that specializes in the master of one thing than knows how to do them all. So coming to a conclusion of this episode, ask yourself, what is your niche? What is your focus? Where are you going? Who are you trying to target? And once you think you have it, narrow it down some more. Once you think you have that, narrow it down some more. How do I narrow it down some more? I'm going to use my business as an example. Let's say I eventually got rid of video and I just did Google ads. I'm going to work with only solar companies. Then I'm going to narrow it down more. I'm going to work with solar companies who have been in business for at least five years that I know have a bigger budget to you know market to a wider audience. Then I'm going to narrow it more. I'm only going to work with solar companies that are one per zone. So I'm not going to work with competing solar companies. I'm going to work with one. And if I get you in that area, that's it. Because now if I work with that one company in that area, they're probably going to pay a premium so nobody else works with me to also market in that area. And that's what I would specifically do. And if I need to narrow it more, I might pick like one solar company that's been in business for five years. That's, you know, one per county. And then maybe it's somebody who uses a specific solar product or a specific engineered solar piece. So maybe instead of we use solar panels from here, here, and here, it's like, oh, we only manufacture solar panels from this factory, from this place with this warranty and go from there. So there's ways you can keep narrowing it down. And as you narrow it down, think of it like a funnel, you know, at the top of your funnel is like very broad brand awareness. And as you go down, there are like 
warmer leads, more specific, ready to purchase or buy your product. You do that with niching too. So as soon as you get to a very specific customer or client where you're like, wow, that's a very specific person, you hit your niche. And that's probably where you'll make more because you're focusing your expertise and knowledge on getting that one person exactly what they need. Your homeworkers, I would say, <laughs> if you're working on this, if you're a business owner or what, like, you know, why'd you start your business and what is your niche? Who are you trying to target and get that? Work on finalizing your niche, work on figuring out what your niche is and always just take it down one more level and get more narrow. So this way, broad equals broke and having a niche will equal money for you. So again, thanks for joining the podcast. Stay tuned. The next podcast will be around the corner and thanks for joining today.